Welcome to Decompression Basics 3, and this is Dr. Pete. I am the voice behind the Chem Doctor. Uh, what I would like to do in this presentation is to go ahead and move on from De Decompression Basics 2. The one thing that I would tell the viewer is that you want to make sure to watch the uh, videos in the correct sequence because each new video is going to build on what we've already learned. All right, and so I want to go ahead and get started. And where we're basically going to start is with a very quick summary over uh, where we ended up in the last video. And that is the following. So we have a diver uh, that is here on the surface and they're about to enter the ocean. And uh, the diagram that I have over here is a rough sketch of an alveolus. Uh, which is the air sac in the lungs. And the way that uh, th that I explained the system in the last presentation was we took the alveolus, we evacuated the, ga uh, the gas space that is over the tissue, we inserted a glass plate, and then what we did was we poked holes in the plate in order to allow the gas to come to equilibrium with the tissue. And in the process of talking about that, we establish that the gas that is over the surface of this liquid will have a total pressure that is equal to whatever the ambient pressure that the diver is breathing. And for the moment, we have the diver on the surface, uh, standing on the beach. The, the regulator is delivering that gas at the same ambient pressure as the air pressure, in this case, that's surrounding the diver, and therefore the total pressure on the surface. And in terms of the gas that's being delivered uh, into the air sac, will be uh, 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, in the last video, I, I uh, described the breakdown of partial pressures, and we're not going to do that in Decompression Basics 3. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and focus in on the nitrogen, which under these circumstances will represent 573 millimeters of mercury, or 0.754 atmospheres of pressure in the air sac in equilibrium with the tissue and for simplicity's sake I'm letting the tissue be H2O although we understand as divers that that the tissue um, albeit which has water in it also is a very complex biological organ so there's a lot of different macromolecules uh, the constitution of the tissue will be unique to the type of tissue it is whether it's heart whether it's blood uh, whether it's cartilage or, or, or you're talking about the material in a joint, for example. The equilibrium uh, that I described in the last video is the one between nitrogen, which is dissolved in the tissue, versus the nitrogen, which is in the form of free, free gas in the air sac. And the direction in which I write this chemical equation is as I'm indicating here. And this is an important criteria for anyone to understand who's, in, who's reading the literature because when they talk about this equilibrium in the literature and Henry's Law, which I have uh, reiterated here, you've got to pay attention to which direction they write this equation because the Henry Law's constant depends on that along with the type of units they're using. So I just want to remind the viewer that uh, I am teaching this system from the point of view of the equilibrium in the way I represent it here. That's the nitrogen gas moving from solution phase to the gas phase. We can represent that equilibrium expression the way I'm doing it here so that it will be the partial pressure of the gas in the air sac divided by the concentration of the nitrogen that is dissolved in solution. Remember that the square brackets mean molarity, and molarity, molarity means uh, is, is defined as the moles of the solute, which in this case is the nitrogen gas dissolved per liter of the tissue. Now, for simplicity's sake, I've also defined the volume of my tissue as being exactly one liter, and I've defined the volume of the air sac uh, at also being one liter. This just makes the manipulation of the numbers that I'm going to utilize in this video easier for the viewer to understand. The Henry Law's constant in units of atmospheres per molarity, all right, so maybe I should go ahead and, and uh, write that in here. So my units 
for this Henry, Henry law constant, the way that I've defined it here, is units of atmospheres per molarity, which in chemistry is, is given as capital M, which is just moles per liter, uh, which I've already um, defined. All right. And the Henry, Henry law constant for this particular equilibrium, the way I have set up at 25 degrees uh, centigrade, is 1600. Now, the viewer will notice that I'm using a temperature which is not body temperature. And the reason that I'm doing that is, it, is because it's actually really difficult when you get into the literature to find uh, these concepts talked about uh, under the context of, of uh, a, a human's body temperature. So in lieu of that, what I've done is I've used uh, the Henry's Law constant uh, based on uh, the most usual way that, I that I've been able to find it in, in the offline research that I've done for this. Now, here's what I want to get to as quick as I can. What we did was we allowed the gas to flow into the air sac, and then I talked about what was going to happen in order for the system to reach saturation. And that's depicted over here on the left side of, of my presentation. So we have a graph here where I have graphed the concentration of nitrogen gas dissolved in the tissue versus time. And you can see that the type of curve that you expect from that is one that is shaped um, like, like I have here. And then if we had sealed off the alveolus, so in other words, let the, let the diver take a breath, seal the alveolus off, and then follow what happens with the partial pressure of the nitrogen, in the gas phase, you would see a slight decrease because some of some of those particles are going to dissolve into the tissue, and that process is going to is going to occur over some kind of time course where eventually the tissue will become saturated with the gas, and at that point, the curve for the uh, for the partial pressure of the nitrogen is going to look like this. And I mentioned in decompression basics too that that we can divide that this graph into basically two parts. The part on the right here that I designate with the arrows is, is where the system has come to equilibrium or saturation, where we are at a point in the relationship between the gas that is in the air sac and the gas that, it dis that is dissolved in the tissue, where for every molecule of N2 that enters the tissue and dissolves uh, into that tissue forming a solution, there will be a molecule that leaves the tissue, that leaves the solution and goes back into the gas phase. That's the reason why I'm using a double half arrow here in the relationship between the nitrogen that is dissolved and the nitrogen that is in the gas phase. And, and this is consistent with this part of the graph. Now you'll notice to the left of the line in this gap, I call this the area this, that is characterized by the kinetics. And what I'm going to do now is more formally define what I mean by the kinetics. So when we talk about kinetics, what we're talking about here um, are the parameters are the parameters that control how fast the system reaches equilibrium or the saturation. Now, it's important for the viewer to realize that, that, that the kinetics of this process and the equilibrium are, are controlled by two, two completely different factors. The equilibrium position at a given temperature represents a proportionality that I've, that I've defined qualitatively right here. I'm going to circle it, which is fixed, basically, at a given temperature. That's why we call this a Henry's Law constant. And I'm going to prove that to the viewer in, uh, in about one second. The kinetics, however, are controlled by, by a, a, a different issue. The equilibrium is something that's defined by thermodynamics. And the thermodynamics, which I'm going to um, talk about in a separate video, I'm not going to get into it here, is, is the thing that actually controls what this proportionality uh, is going to be at a fixed temperature. 
The kinetics, however, are independent of that. The kinetics define how fast we're going to reach this point. The kinetics has to do with the pathway. And I'm going to talk about this issue more in also basically in future videos. For now, what you just need to realize is that the kinetics basically are the parameters that are that are going to determine how fast once we allow this gas to enter the the air sac how fast the system is going to reach saturation and as you might guess the speed at which that happens is going to be dependent also on the type of tissue all right because the type of tissue is going to control the various issues that that will um, um, determine how fast the, the nitrogen gas, the molecules themselves, can actually move through those various barriers and disperse itself in uniform dis distribution throughout the entire tissue. All right, The equilibrium state is the point at which the nitrogen gas that will dissolve in the tissue has in fact dissolved and has evenly dispersed itself throughout that tissue source. So the kinetics tell us how fast that's going to happen. The equilibrium gives us the proportionality that we, we should expect for that particular tissue at the point when saturation happens. All right, now what I want to do is come back and describe this equilibrium constant in a little bit more detail that should describe to the viewer, in fact, what this number means, essentially. Now, to do that, what we're going to do first is calculate the concentration in moles per liter of nitrogen gas at the equilibrium point for this transition. The way that we're going to do that is to realize that we actually already know the partial pressure of the nitrogen at the equilibrium position. So we know the, the value in the top of this fraction, and we know the equilibrium constant which happens to have the proper units for, for the calculation that we want to do. So I'm going to just do a little bit of algebra here. We're going to rearrange uh, for the concentration of nitrogen dissolved in the tissue. And that's going to be equal to the partial pressure of the nitrogen that we have at equilibrium. And I'll, I'll go ahead and keep my units here. Divided by the equilibrium constant, which is 1,600 uh, and that's in units of atmospheres per molarity, and I'll use the chemical designation of a capital M for that. And when we calculate this out, what we get is 4.7 times 10 to the minus fourth uh, moles of nitrogen gas per liter of tissue. All right, and another way to represent that number, actually, the, I prefer it this way is to rewrite it this way. There will be three zeros in front of the four, like this. And this is moles per liter. So this is the concentration, and this is moles per liter. This is the concentration of nitrogen gas that is dissolved in the tissue. So let me write that in here to be, just be abundantly clear about it. So this is in tissue at equilibrium. It's dissolved in the tissue at equilibrium. All right, now, what I want to do next is we're going to take this number right here because what I want to demonstrate to the viewer is, the, is this actual equilibrium ratio where I have both the top of the fraction and the denominator of the fraction in exactly the same units. So we're going to convert partial pressure of nitrogen gas into moles. Now to do that, we're going to use the ideal gas law. So I am making an assumption here that um, the gas that we're dealing with is an ideal gas, which for, for the level of this presentation and what I'm trying to communicate, I think that that's a perfectly valid assumption to make. If my life depended on knowing exactly what the moles of, of nitrogen gas were in the air sac, then you're obviously going to use a more complex calculation in order to, to figure that out. Now, it might have been a while since some of you have seen this, so I'm going to define all these parameters really quick. Pressure, uh, P is for pressure. All right, the volume is the volume of the uh, that contains the gas, and we're and and that's why I deliberately let my air sac be one liter. 
the n value here is for the particles. The r is uh, the gas constant, and I'll give that to you when we run the calculation in a second. And then our temperature is the temperature actually in absolute units, which would be Kelvin. So the value that we're going to use here, since we're at 25 uh, degrees centigrade, the Kelvin value that we're going to use is going to be 298 Kelvin. And just so that you know where I got that from, to convert degrees centigrade to Kelvin, Kelvin is equal to whatever the degrees centigrade they are, plus uh, 273. So now, doing the algebra for this, all right, we get an equation that, that will be PV is over RT. All right, and I'll go ahead and we're going to plug in. So we're going to have uh, 0 0.754 atmins for the nitrogen. Our volume is 1 liter. The gas constant is going to be 0 0.0821. Two, one, and my units for that are liters at mins divided by moles, remember, which are just particles, times uh, Kelvin. All right, and then our temperature is 298K. And you can see that our liters are going to cancel with our liters, my at mins with my at mins. Uh, my K with my K, and we've actually solved for the moles, which is uh, what we set out to do here. So my particles for this are going to be 0 0.031, and that's moles by the ideal gas equation. But remember, I set us up for this. Our gas space is 1 liter, and that's what we just calculated our moles for. And our tissue is also being defined as one liter. So not only is this the moles of nitrogen gas in the gas space. So let's go ahead and put this as N2 in gas space. This is also the concentration of that gas. 0.031 moles per liter since we're in one liter. Now, I realize that we're getting cluttered here. But what we're going to do is recalculate our equilibrium constant. I'm going to do it up here. And I'm going to recalculate it now where both the, the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction are in the same units. So the top of my fraction now is 0 0.031, and that's molarity. I'll just do it this way to keep things simple. And the bottom of my fraction is 0 0.00047 molar. All right, and when we divide this out, we see that our k value now defined in units of particles because that's what we've done all right is 66 to 1 now the importance of this the, the, what i want the viewer to think about and realize is that once the diver wherever the diver is whether it's on the surface before entering the water or after entering the water and going to a certain depth if the diver is at whatever that depth is, long enough so that the kinetics to get to saturation have occurred. As long as we are at fixed temperature, then the ratio of free gas to dissolved gas is going to be a proportionality that is going to be similar to what you're seeing here. It won't be the same because I'm letting the tissue be water. All right, And we know the tissue is not water. And there are other complications in this as well. But what's going to happen is if the diver is at a certain location for long enough so that that tissue comes to saturation, then this, what saturation means is that there will be a gas to solution phase equilibrium that will look something like this. And you can look at this as being another way of thinking about this, which is reasonable, is that this means that there will be 66 particles of nitrogen gas in the gas phase for every particle of nitrogen gas which is dissolved in the solution phase at equilibrium based on Henry's law. All right. So the kinetics tell, tell us how fast we're going to get here. All right. Now, what I want to do next is we're going to move to a situation where 
We're going to let the diver finally get in the water. Okay, so on this screen, what I'm showing you is the diver now in the water. And what we're going to do is let our diver descend to 33 feet, just because this keeps things uh, easy for us. So remember that in terms of the ambient pressure, on the surface, the diver was experiencing one atmosphere because of, the, of literally the atmosphere generating weight on the surface of the earth. Now that the diver has descended to 33 feet, we have the weight of the water operating on the diver, which, which generates pressure. Um, for every 33 feet, you basically can add another atmosphere of pressure. So the total pressure operating on our diver at this point uh, is a pressure of uh, two uh, atmospheres. So if we're in millimeters of mercury, you just have to multiply that by a two. So, so now the diver is uh, basically under 1,520 millimeters of, of mercury of pressure once he or she descends to 33 feet. Of concern, again, is the, the inert gas. So the partial pressure of the nitrogen on the surface was 0.754 atmins in the air sac of the alveolus. Because that pressure is now doubled, the pressure of the partial pressure of the nitrogen is now 1.508 atmospheres. Now, initially, when the diver shifts to 33 feet, the diver has shifted the equilibrium position of the relationship between the dissolved gas and the free gas out of equilibrium. So it's like, like this. What I want to do, let me just use a picture because I want to make sure not to lose anybody at this point. So here's my alveolus again. It's uh, I, And just we haven't changed uh, the volume or the type of tissue or any of that. So we're going to let the tissue be H2O again. All right, even though we know that's not the case. And prior to the diver getting into the water, we know that the system was at equilibrium. We've covered all of that. So a certain amount of nitrogen was is actually dissolved in the tissue, equilibrium uh, gas, all right? And then there's going to be a certain amount of the nitrogen um, that is above the surface of the liquid. And just put those guys in here like this. We know that the concentration that we calculated in on the last screen for the nitrogen in the tissue is 0 0.00047 uh, molar. And the partial pressure uh, or the concentration of the nitrogen above the surface of the liquid prior or at the time of equilibrium, excuse me, at the time of equilibrium is 0 0.031 moles per liter at 25 degrees. So this is these two concentrations are what we have before the diver dives in. All right, now we let the diver go ahead and enter the water and go to 33 feet. The situation that we now have when the diver takes a breath is different because the gas now that enters this airspace is twice as pressurized at this point than it was when the diver was on the surface. So the system has been shoved, literally, or moved out of equilibrium and now has to reattain equilibrium. So because the concentration of nitrogen is no longer 0.031, it has now been shifted. So let me go ahead and change the color. So we, we now remember that, that this is our relationship at the point of saturation. When the diver moves to 33 feet, though, he's not at equilibrium initially because the system had the very first breath that diver takes at 33 feet. Now there is a new concentration of gas over the surface of the tissue. And so, what's going to happen if we go over here and we ask about the kinetics? Here's the situation that we have at the surface. So let me go ahead and, and mark this. Right here is where our surface situation was at the point when the diver jumps in. Now what's going to happen kinetically? So essentially the amount of gas particles of nitrogen that we have at the moment the diver reaches 33 feet 
is going to be increased and it, and the value is going to be increased much greater than the equilibrium value. So I'll give you an example of this. If we were if we were to ask the question, all right, what's this ratio going to look like at the point when the diver takes a breath at 33 feet prior to the system reaching saturation? So we can write an expression for this, which is not the equilibrium expression. I'm going to call it Q. And this is going to, what, what I'm going to do is go ahead and insert the partial pressure of the nitrogen at the moment the diver takes the breath when we're not at equilibrium. All right, and then I'm going to put in the uh, concentration value for the nitrogen in the tissue, which is at equilibrium. And we're going to go we're going to go ahead and calculate that value. And what we get is a number which is whoops. Let me sorry about the glitch here. Let me fix that. What we're going to do is get a number which is going to be three thousand uh, two hundred and nine, just rounding up over one. Now. When you compare this number to the uh, equilibrium constant at 25 degrees for the saturation when the diver was on the surface, it's 1600. You can see that this value is significantly larger, right? The 1600 value is much uh, smaller than 3209. This system at this point is way, way, way away from equilibrium. And so what has to happen is this number needs to decrease in order for its magnitude to come back in line with 1600. Or another way of thinking about it, to arrive at that special um, ratio that we calculated, which was 66 to 1. All right. So this value here, if we were to calculate the molecules is going to be a number that's way greater than 66. So what's going to happen is nitrogen molecules once again are going to be moving in a dominant way into the tissue. In other words, there will be more movement of gas particles into the tissue than gas particles out of the tissue. I'll show that this way where we've got three going in and one coming out. And that has no inherent meaning other than to show that you're going to have a majority moving in towards saturation by comparison to the guys coming out. Now, if we if we were to represent this graphically, here's what, what you're going to see if we were going to increase. So let me just expand my uh, axes here. So this would, what you would see on the graph here would be something now that looks like this. Again, there would be a steep... Uh, incline like this in terms of the gain and concentration within the tissue and then eventually you're going to hit a new plateau that's what this would look like and up here is going to be this new value which I'm going to uh, talk about now so we're going to go ahead very quickly and calculate the new equilibrium value for this the first thing we're going to do is realize that at equilibrium at 25 degrees C the Henry law law constant 1600 is is still relevant because this is the ratio which we're going to reattain the partial pressure the new equilibrium partial pressure is going to be equal to the new partial pressure of uh, the nitrogen and the constant the new concentration of n2 in the tissue I'll write in here like that so doing the algebra and solving for the molarity of the of nitrogen at that point, we just rearrange the values uh, like this, and the new concentration of nitrogen dissolved in the tissue is now going to be 9.4 times 10 to the minus fourth, and uh, this is in again in units of moles per liter this is what we're going to have at saturation. So that's what this value is here. And if you're paying attention, you can see that this number that I'm now cir uh, circling is exactly twice the value of this. 
we increased the value of our partial pressure by a factor of two and the concentration of nitrogen at saturation doubled. Now, to prove my point about the molecules, what we're going to do is grab this number and we're going to recalculate the moles of uh, nitrogen gas above the tissue in the air sac. So our, our new partial pressure of the nitrogen is going to be 1.508 atmins. Again, we've let the volume be exactly one liter. For brevity, I'm just going to write R as capital R here. The value is 0.0821, and the units are liters times atmospheres divided by mole times K. And then again, our temperature is going to be, we're going to let it be 298 Kelvin. So the new value for the moles is going to be 0 0.062. And, that, and again, because we're in a, a volume which I stipulated was one liter, this also represents the molarity of the nitrogen, which is in the air sac above, uh, above the tissue, all right, above the solution. Now, if we take the K ratio for this, in molecules, it's going to be 0 0.062, okay, divided by 0 0.00094, and it indeed equals 66 over 1. So you can see we get this ratio back every single time. So my main point is, is that it doesn't matter where the diver goes in the water column for a given tissue. If the diver is at that location long enough, long enough for that particular tissue to be saturated, then you will arrive at this specific ratio or, or a specific ratio which is going to be like this, where there will be a certain concentration of nitrogen gas in the air sac above the tissue relative to the amount of nitrogen which is dissolved in the tissue. When the diver comes back out from that particular depth and therefore from that particular ambient pressure, then our system will have to realign and it will have to come back to this proportionality. And again, the issue that the diver has is that when they move back out of the water column, that has to be done in such a way that when our system reattains this this unique proportionality at the fixed temperature of our body temperature, this has to happen at a rate which is slow enough where the gas in the tissue is not able to form uh, the level of bubble bubbling which causes the decompression sickness. All right, and with that, I would like to go ahead and close the video. I would like to thank the viewer for taking the time to watch this presentation. And after the first three presentations, the next video series, we will finally start to get into uh, the various decompression models. Again, thank you for watching the presentation, and I hope you come back.